Wake up Chicago to what's in your drinking water. Today, we're gonna to talk about what's in Chicago water. And we're gonna do this because there's been so much interest in water because of Flint, Michigan's problem and the lawsuit that has occurred in Chicago regarding Chicago's water. 6.6 .6 million of us in the Chicagoland area depend on Lake Michigan for our fresh water. That's a lot of people, isn't it? I mean, that's just crazy. Our area is home to, uh, or Lake Michigan is home to major industries and major cities. So if you think about it, Lake Michigan, where we're getting our water, borders Chicago, Milwaukee, Green Bay, huge manufacturing plants down in, and uh, refineries that are down in northern Indiana. Um, you have major, major utilities that are making, uh, using coal-fired plants to produce uh, electricity for us, both in Illinois, there's 17 of them, and in Michigan. These are all causes for concern to our water. So what are we going to consider when it comes to our water? We're going to look at three things that I think that you should be concerned about with your water. Obviously lead, we're going to talk about mercury, and we're going to talk about chromium-6. Lead, to begin with, it's been a hotly discussed issue as we all know. The class action lawsuits is just it's, it's really brought a lot of things to, to, to light, and we urge you to really consider what plumbing is. Plumbing, the root word of plumbing, is to plumb, and in Latin, that means to use lead. So, the Chicagoland area, we used uh, lead as our service pipes to take the water from the city lines, which are under the streets in front of your home, and bring that into your home. That was done up all the way up until 1985. They did change that after that, but that was decades after other major cities like New York stopped using lead service pipes to bring water into their buildings. Cause for concern? We think so. The water commissioner resigning because of the process in which he was testing, uh, his, his uh, commission was testing water on a regular basis, that's another cause for concern. So lead is our number one concern right now in regards to Chicago water. We urge you to test your water to actually see if you have lead in it. The second thing that we want to talk about today is mercury in water. Mercury in water is a little known discussion and hasn't really been talked about for many years. However, we like to talk about it because it's very interesting. You can't really eat the fish from Lake Michigan, but they say you can drink the water. Now, that makes me pause and wonder, doesn't it? It's like, wait a second. I can only eat one fish a month from Lake Michigan, but I can drink all the water I want. I mean, it sort of makes you pause and say, hmm, should I really do that? And so we urge you to understand why. Mercury is a byproduct of coal-fired electrical plants or electricity plants that are line Lake Michigan. So in Chicagoland, we have one up in Waukegan. The amount of uh, mercury that it dumps is absolutely unbelievable. We urge you to research it, do your own homework, read about it. When you look across the lake into, lake into Michigan, there's many, many more of these plants that are dumping its waste right into Lake Michigan. They, now, they have some permits which were recently eased by our federal government, and it makes you pause and go, huh, why is that happening? I really can't an answer the question for you. I do want to get more involved. I would urge you to get more involved with your local and state authorities and start voting. Start actually using your power, which is to vote, and get involved. The third and other troubling issue that's in Lake Michigan water is chromium-6. Now, chromium-6 made its huge debut, or made huge, made huge news, back when Aaron Brockridge's story came out. Now, Aaron Brockridge's story came out because they found that a manufacturer had actually dumped chromium-6 into the water supply that had given a lot of the neighbors cancer. So, we know that chromium-6 is a carcinogen. Now, in Chicago water, believe it or not, our water supply has 11 times the chromium-6 level that is now allowed in California. Boy, that's amazing, isn't it? Makes you pause and think, like, wait a second. How do they allow that? Well, the EPA set its standard back in 1972, and back in 1972, they thought chromium-6 was healthy for the human body. It's only California, which has now set stricter standards, that make you go, wow, that's important. But you want to know something? The EPA still has not updated its standards. So today, in Chicago, we're drinking water that has high levels of chromium-6 that can cause cancer, 
and yet we are considered to have safe water. Again, makes you pause and go, hmm, doesn't it? Well, what we hope that you do from learning about these three contaminants in water is we urge you to do a couple different things. First of all, please get involved. Call your congressman. Get involved with your local authorities. Ask them where their water is. Demand better water. Demand that they are going to do something. Two, we urge you to possibly get a filter system for your, for your house. Maybe not through us, but can't get something good that's going to remove these three things out of your water. I urge you to really look at reverse osmosis. When you go to buy a reverse osmosis system, make sure that it has an NSF cert for removing these things from water. It's very important for you to consider that. Now, Chromium 6 is relatively new. You won't find an NSF cert yet for that, but we do know that NSF uh, we do know that reverse osmosis technology does remove chromium-6 from the water supply. Lastly, we urge you to not buy bottled water. Why? We're a bottler. Believe it or not, we love bottled water. We sell lots of it, but it's very, very profitable for us, so that's why we love it. But the truth of the matter is, is most bottlers don't have to have, don't follow any really guidelines. What they can do is they can simply buy water from Lake Michigan, from Chicago, they can run it through a filter to make it taste better, and then they can sell it to you. And that's what most of them do. And by the way, in the meantime, it's sitting in plastic. So we urge you to really do your research. Either contact the manufacturer of the bottle or the bottler that is making your water. Ask them what the process is of, of making their water. Here at Angel, we do reverse osmosis our water, and we do bottle it. But before that, and instead of that, we urge you to consider a filter system. And buy it from anybody. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be just us. We urge you to really, really do your own research and get involved. That's the very best thing that we can recommend to you. We hope that this has been a quick understanding of the top three things that we're concerned about your water. If you have any questions, please log on to angelwater.com or contact us anytime. We have water educators around that can always answer questions for you. Have a great day.